So you're probably thinking, is there a way which I can customize Windows 10 or Windows 11 before it installs onto a machine? And is there a way which I can actually maybe disable specific applications, you know, all the Microsoft bloatware that you don't want in Windows when it installs? And is there maybe a feature to disable certain Windows features or maybe even customize the drivers that installs into Windows before it installs? Well, luckily there is, thanks to some software called NT Lite. Now, just a quick introduction. My name is Matthew from Matthew's Tech Hub. Hope you're doing well. Welcome back to today's video, guys. So as mentioned, I'm going to be covering some software called NT Lite, which many of you may have used before. Um, I'm an IT professional, so I use it for um, when I'm deploying Windows laptops to home and uh, business customers in business environments. But again, I'm going to be showing you on how you can actually use the software today. Now, the software is paid for, is uh, paid and also partially free, but I'm going to be covering the free version of the software today. But again, obviously, if you guys maybe need some of the paid features that I don't cover, you might want to just go ahead and obviously purchase it from NT Lite's website. So without further ado, guys, let's jump straight into the video. So before we do actually get started, there's going to be something which you need to do before we can start using the NT Lite software, which is you need to go and get a fresh, uh, clean ISO image of either Windows 10 or Windows 11. Now, the reason I say clean is because I probably wouldn't recommend downloading an ISO image from an untrusted source because Again, it could have something in there which probably shouldn't be there, like a virus or sort of software, anything like that. So what I'm going to suggest doing, guys, is in the description box down below in the bottom of this video, I will have a link to the Microsoft official, well, the official Microsoft download Windows 11 page, which I'll put a short preview on screen now of what the website looks like. So when you go there, um, you will need to go and download the media creation tool. So I'm going to be covering today's video on actually customizing the Windows 11 installer. So if you are maybe customizing Windows 10 or any other version of Windows which the software supports, you might find that some of the options may look a little bit different just because Windows 11 has more or, or all the latest features and more features than Windows 10, for example. So um, what you're going to do straight away, so once you've got the media creation tool, um, as you can see on my desktop here, I've got the three things. So I've already got the iOS image, but I'm going to show you on how you can use the media creation tool to get that got the NT Lite and then we've got the media creation tool. So I'm going to run through first with the media creation tool. So once you've got the creation tool, guys, you're going to simply run the software and it's just going to say getting a few things ready. This will only take a few seconds. It's just going to quickly check to make sure your PC can use the software. And then what it's going to do, it's going to give you the, the notice and the terms, which probably many like you is going to click on agree like I do. So yeah, it's going to agree to that. Click on accept. And then it's just going to say getting a few things ready. So it's just going to give that a couple more seconds there. And then as you can see, it now asks us for the language and addition. So obviously the language I'm going to leave as English United Kingdom. And then the addition, I'm going to leave that as Windows 11. But maybe if you are from another country, you might want to use a different language for obvious reasons. Which again, if you need to change those, you can just untick this use recommended options for this PC right here. And then you can just go and select the language that you require. So I'm going to leave that as default. I'm just going to click on next. Then the next question is going to ask is if you want to install this to a USB flash drive or an ISO file. Now, again, we're going to be using an ISO file because we're going to be customizing Windows before it installs to the device. So I'm going to click on ISO file and click next. And then straight away, it's going to ask me where I want to save this file. So I'm going to maybe select it to the desktop and then you can just call it Windows or whichever name you want to call it. But maybe you want to maybe create a file that is so yes, and keep it safe somewhere that you want to keep as a clean copy. But again, I will just leave it as Windows and just click save. So once you've uh, clicked save, guys, it will then just download and then it will just then create the ISO file. So you may want to pause the video and then come back once you've done that. OK, so now we're going to jump straight into the NT Lite software. So again, I'll put the link to NT Lite down in the description box down below. So if you just go and quickly go to their website and download, I'll put a short preview on the screen now as to what their website looks like. And what you can do is um, you just simply just go and download the free version and install it to your PC. Once you've installed that, you're just going to go to NT Lite, which will be on your desktop. I want to give that a second to load and then straight away you'll see that now the software has loaded right in front of us. So what we're going to do guys is we're going to select on the add option just on the top left here and then we're going to select on image. So as you can see it gives you image directory or image for ISO. Now we're going to select on image ISO and we're just going to locate that ISO image which we've got right here. So it's going to open up the ISO image that you've just downloaded using the media creation tool. 
And then straight away, now in front of you, you'll see that it now shows you all the versions of Windows. Now this is all the versions or flavors, whatever you want to call it, in version in Windows in that ISO image that you can install. So you'll notice obviously when you're installing Windows, it'll say join select home, pro, pro education, education, all the different versions. So um, I'm going to today I'm going to be customizing the Windows 11 Pro. So we're going to select on Pro, and then what we're going to do is just going to right click and then click on Load. And it'll say it's going to create a writable copy because again it's just going to create another version of this which obviously we're going to install later on so we're going to click on ok to this i'm just going to let that load so it will take a little bit of time if your computer is maybe a little bit slow or, um, or maybe you've got a fast pc depending on what uh, specs you've got it may take a bit of time so just let that process i'm going to pause the video again and i'll be back in just a moment so as you can see windows 11 has now loaded into the nt light software so we've got a nice little green circle here and then it just says loaded on the right hand side under the status section so now as you can also see on the left hand side you've now got a selection of options which we can now use and customize so the first one which i normally jump into guys is i normally select on the updates which is the windows 11 updates or windows 10 depending on which version you're going to be customizing today so as you can see um, on the top left we've got this button that says add now, if you actually select on this, you can now select on this option here. It says latest online updates. And what that will do is that I'll just quickly check what updates are missing out of this ISO build against what is actually available online. So you might notice that some of them, I mean, for example, today I've only got two that are missing, but I've got some that's downloaded already. But I'm going to actually install those two that are missing. So what you want to do is, I mean, if you want to select all of them, uh, you can normally just click on this box up here and that will select every single one. But if you maybe you want to select a handful or maybe just a certain ones, um, you can just tick on the boxes just on the left hand side here. Now, what, what next option I'm going to do is in the bottom right hand corner, it says NQ. So I'm going to add, click on this and then straight away again, it's going, it might give you a warning. That might just be because you've already got some in, installed or some selected, but that's fine. So I'm going to click on just OK right there. And that's it. And then that will now download the latest updates when we start creating this build. So the next section I'm going to go down to is drivers. So if you wanted to, guys, you can actually add specific drivers into this version of Windows. So maybe you want to add like uh, NVIDIA graphics drivers or um, any sort of display drivers or maybe even like SATA drivers or anything like that. Again, you can add those just by clicking on the add button just in the top left hand corner. And again, you can go to driver files. So if you actually have the driver file itself, you can just go locate that and then that will then import it into there. Now the next section, again, I normally skip registry because I don't really want to change anything, but if you want to make any registry edits, again, you can also do that by opening up the Hive here. As you can see, I've got user, and you can just go down um, and customize it there, but we're going to leave that as it is. So I'm going to go down to post setup. Now this is where you can actually customize things. So if you maybe wanted to run a specific command, or maybe even load a file before Windows launches again, you can also import all of that into here as well. But again, for today's tutorial, I'm not going to be covering this. So we're going to go down next. We're going to actually uh, skip down a little bit. So we're going to go down to uh, components. So as you can see in components, it's going to give us a little bit of a warning here. Uh, you can actually customize. So as you can see, it's got an, a section for apps. Now this is very this is very helpful even because um, as you know, Windows 10 and Windows 11, it comes with a lot of bloatware and just crap that you just don't need. Um, so I'm going to actually go through this list here and I'm going to sort of go through the stuff which I would install with Windows 11 or stuff that I just don't personally think is needed. So again, um, you can inst uninstall Cortana, Feedback Hub, Films and TV, uh, all these music apps right here. Let's keep going down this one. You've got Mail and Calendar. Sometimes I might leave that because the client might maybe want to use Mail and Calendar rather than using Outlook. But again, you obviously I know that Outlook you can now download from the Windows Store. Um, so I'm probably going to get rid of that. Microsoft News, no one would use that. People, Photos, um, Solitaire, Sticky, again, Microsoft To Do, um, version of Office there as well, because Windows does try to install a very sort of basic version of Office and then gets the user to try and uh, purchase it. But again, I'm going to untick that because normally if I'm installing it, they would normally install it under their own license. Uh, what else have we got? We've got Paint, uh, you've got Power Automate, uh, the snipping tool, that's quite handy. Actually, a lot of people do use that. Uh, store experience, I'm going to get rid of that tips uh let's see what else we got here windows calculator camera defender um oh actually uh yeah you want to keep windows defender actually that's points keep that on there so that's the basic uh windows antivirus they've got windows maps um you know you've got terminal but again go through this list guys untick and tick stuff that you don't and do need and then once you've done that again uh, you can just simply just go up to the top and then just close that just like by clicking on that 
again, you've got drivers. So if you want to maybe disable those, but again, I can't do that because um, it does require a license. Obviously, I haven't got a licensed version of NT Lite just for today. So this is just the demo version, which I'm going to be showing you. So if we go down a little bit further, um, there's a few more things which you can also do. For example, you've got system, uh, you've also got network. So maybe you want to um, you know, disable certain things under network. You can also do that. Um, if we also go down here, go down to features again, so you can customize specific features in Windows. Maybe you want to install Hyper-V or maybe you don't want to install Hyper-V, maybe you want to install Net Framework um, or any sort of features that aren't normally enabled by default. Rather than having to sort of do those once Windows is installed, you can also do that in here. So for example, if I wanted Hyper-V, I would just select on this box right here and that's it. And then as you can see, that will now then be enabled. So if we now scroll down a bit further, and the next one I would have a look at is settings. So as you can see, so you can actually customize a lot of things in here. So this is going to be the section where you're probably going to mostly be sort of be focused on. So if you want to maybe customize the desktop, so when you install Windows, that there's going to be specific icons on there ready to go straight away. So for example, you can have the, uh, well, you have the My Computer, which sometimes I do usually have enabled. So you can just go uh, onto the My Computer, just double click on where it says default. And as you can see, it will change to enabled or default or uh, disabled. So I'm gonna leave that as enabled. And then maybe you want the network icon to show. So I want that to be enabled. Um, let's have a look what else we got here. We've got a few more things. So you've got notification center. I normally disable that because it's quite annoying because I have so many customers call me up saying, well, why am I getting notices about this and that? So can I just disable it just to save the phone calls? And then if you scroll down a bit further as well, um, you've even got more sections down here like quiet hours. So you can disable and enable, enable that. Focus assist, um, desktop icon size, so you can make it extra large or smaller, depending obviously what, what obviously uh, if you want it to be big or small. So if you actually just go through this list, guys, just have a look. Again, you can disable and enable many different things. Some stuff, again, you will need. Some stuff you might leave as default. But again, you can really customize and go through and save yourself a lot of time just by going through this uh, settings list right here. So the next section which I would configure is the unattended section. So as you can see on the top left hand corner, you've got the, well, once you click unattended in on the, on the left hand side list, you've got default, enable and disable. So I would select on enable and this, this now allows you to customize this section. So as you can see, uh, we've now got an option here, which is under the out of box experience is for skipping the Microsoft account creation process. Now I would always enable that by default to obviously skip that process. Cause again, I, I personally, I always find that creating a local account is better compared to a Microsoft account. Um, if you want to know what the differences are, again, I've got a video already on this. Um, so please check out the links in the description box below if you want to go have a look at that video. But again, so what you can do is you can just click on uh, this one here and obviously on the right hand side, you've got your drop down menu. I'm just going to select that to true. So I want that to skip the Microsoft account. But again, uh, you've got skip local account set up. So I, I obviously I want it to create a local account. So I don't want it to skip that. So I'm going to set that as false. And you've also got the EULA. -E -U so if you want to skip that, because you probably won't read it anyway, Again, you can also skip that as well. Um, and normally by default as well, I normally skip the wireless setup because sometimes it, when you do connect the device to the internet or, or to the wireless, uh, Windows will suddenly notice that obviously you are uh, connected to the internet and they go, oh, hey, well, you can actually now create a Microsoft account. So just to save you the grief there, I would normally just click on enable to skip that. So just set that to true. But again, there's loads of different options in here as well, guys. So for example, you can skip the welcome center so, um, so again, you might want to even use that. You can skip the Windows Welcome, which you might even want to use. Um, and also this, you can also skip all the privacy questions as well, where it asks you if you want to um, sort of send your data to Microsoft and uh, allow Microsoft to see what you're clicking and typing, all that sort of stuff. Again, you can also uh, skip all that as well. But just going back to the settings uh, section, guys, on the, on the left-hand side, um, you may also want to take a quick sort of lengthy look at the privacy section. Now, obviously, depending on whether you want to sort of be quite private with your Windows uh, build, um, you might, again, you can obviously just, you can uh, set specific apps to not have access, like for example, to your camera, uh, to your contacts. Again, obviously you might want to maybe go through that because usually the first thing is when I install Windows is I actually go into settings and into privacy and I spend usually about sort of 10 to 15 minutes just going through that privacy section, which can be a bit time consuming. But again, to save you that time, you can just configure it all right here. So when you install Windows, it's all ready to go. Um, but yeah, that's it, guys. So again, it's it's very easy. It's very, very sort of user friendly. You can really go into this in detail. Again, obviously, if you have, if you may have to go and purchase the ver the full version of NT Lite, you might find it very helpful. But if you actually, uh, but once you have actually customized everything, you just simply go down to the apply on the bottom left here. And then straight away, as you can see, it will now.
Now, I just wanted to quickly jump into here because this is something I forgot to mention at the time of the recording. On the left-hand side, you'll see that there's an option just below where my mouse cursor is called Remove Non-Essential Additions. Now, you'll actually want to select this option because that will actually remove the variants of Windows that you are not editing. So, for example, if you're maybe customizing Windows 11 Pro, but you, but you want to get rid of the variants like Windows 11 Home and Education that you saw at the start of, of the video, um, then obviously you will want to select this option because that will massively reduce the ISO image size. And then on the right hand side, you'll see that it says Total Pending Tasks Overview. Now you want this is obviously what is going to happen and what the software NT Lite is going to do as it goes down before it actually creates the final version of the ISO image for you to install to your USB stick. Make sure that you go through that in detail and just make sure that it, all the options that you have configured and also changed are all and exactly match what you want the ISO image to be. If not, you can just go back and select the option on the left hand side to then go recustomize. Anyway, back to the video. I'll say save the image, save the image in trim editions, or stop before saving the image. This is the certain saving mode. And then again, you've got the image format as well. But obviously at the, at the bottom right here, it says create ISO. So I want to do that. So, and then you're going to uh, specify where you want to save this customized build of Windows 11. Because again, you might use it for multiple devices, or um, if you want to maybe share it with someone, you can do that as well. So I would obviously suggest creating or saving it in a, in a separate space to where your clean ISO image is, just to make sure you don't get them both confused and also name it something different. So I'd probably call it Windows 11 uh, and then maybe customized or something like that. And then just sip, simply hit on, hit on save on the right. And again, you can also set a label if you want. I'm just going to leave that as NT Lite. And then just click on OK. And that's it now. So what it will do is once you've done that, you're going to click on the process in the top left-hand corner. And it will say Windows Defender is detected. Again, you can disable it, but don't worry. I'm just going to leave it that's obviously because I've got Windows Defender already switched on in this uh, virtual machine I'm de using to demonstrate today's video. But I'm just going to click on Yes. And then it will say Start Applying Changes. But again, um, so what we're going to do, guys, we're going to hit on Yes. Minimize Windows Defender there, and that's it. And as you can see, it's now going to go through everything. Um, it'll show you all the tasks it's going to do. And then at the, obviously at the very end, it will say create ISO image. So once you've got the ISO image, guys, um, you're then going to simply just burn that to your USB. Um, so again, you might want to use the tool Rufus. Links are down in the bot in the description box as well. Um, but yeah, you, Rufus is usually the easiest tool to use. Um, many of you have probably done it before. But again, you can just burn the ISO image to a USB stick and then just simply go and uh, plug it into your device that you're looking to install it to. And then that's it. You'll have a fully customized version of Windows 11. Well, hopefully that's helped you out, guys. I hope this tutorial has been okay. I've, I've kept it sort of short and sweet. Just try not sort of let it drag on. But if you do have any questions about this software or any problems at all, again, please comment uh, down in the description box down below. Also, please also smash a like uh, that like button if obviously this video has helped. And um, of course, as always, guys, please also smash that subscribe button as well. Thanks for watching, everyone. Take care and see you in the next one. Bye for now.